Welcome to Ohms Lounge with your host, Ohms, and myself, the Lone Salesman. What's going on, Josh? Dude, nothing much, man. I've just been doing some research on these animals in space because, oh man, I didn't realize that we sent, we've been sending animals into space ever since that we've been launching rockets into space. And like, there's just a lot. I didn't realize this. Like, I don't know. I'm not sure what you found in your research whenever you were uh, looking for content for the for the episode. But I don't know. Uh, you got anything that you want to start off with? Well, I, I thought this was going to be a fun topic, but uh, actually, it's pretty depressing. <laughs> I mean, just looking at these numbers, like looking at how many animals have actually lost their lives to this or. I, I think we might have to crack one open for for, for this one. So let's we, we got to pour one out for uh, for Not Albert. For the second man, yeah, Albert one and two. Well, basically all the monkeys that were being sent into outer space from the 1940s and 50s. I mean, because like looking over here and from all the stuff that I found, two thirds of monkeys launched into space from 1940s and 50s died on missions or soon after landing. Jeez. Yeah, like this one right here. This is the one that I did a lot of research on. So Albert II, he oh, no. died on impact like after a parachute failure from going from outer space on re-entry. And I was just like, man, how fast is that? So that's 17,500 miles per hour. And it's nearly 25 mocks. Like that's a lot. Like, imagine just, like, this monkey by himself, not knowing what the hell is going on, and then he just ends up just crash landing. Like, God. what's even more sad is that they still had, what is it, Albert II, let's check it out really quick. Yep, his respiratory and cardiological data was recorded up until the moment of impact. <laughs> Jeez, so they had the time of death and everything. Yeah. He was alive for all of it. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, what, one could hope that maybe he was unconscious. You know, maybe he just freaked out and knocked himself out. But, man, I I always thought it was like a fun idea. I, I mean, we contrary to Albert, you know, we have uh, Ham, the epic space chimp, who successfully did a suborbital um, trip and back. And there's that infamous picture of him. He He actually made it. Like, what a hero, right? The only sad part is, um, he, he, you know, some of these animals, obviously, these animals didn't have their consent to be sent into space. <laughs> you know? Cue the fucking clip of Caesar. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but, you know, like, you know, Caesar's ass would have said fucking no, <laughs> just like in the movie. But, dude, I mean, look at this monkey right here. It looks like he's giving the thumbs up, right? I don't know. Look at those eyes. Those eyes look like he's being forced to say the thumbs up. Like, no, he knows what he's doing. He was like, this is for America. <laughs> I mean, see, look at this. This is, like, the most patriotic. Like, look at that face, dude. Like, he's got that he's got that nice, yeah, I did it. I did it. I fucking did it. The captain's like, congratulations yeah, that's a full bird captain, bro. on a job well done, shipmate. Did you, it for America. Do you think they made him do sweepers? No. <laughs> you know my ass wouldn't be doing shit if I was that monkey. What, that, I wonder what space they would keep him in. Do you think they the kept monkey? him in the cheese mess? Like they volunteered, you know, like, hey, we're the chief, we're going to keep him in the cheese mess because, uh, or the wardroom. Or you think they just put him in like, <laughs> I don't know, like a store, a fan room or something? <laughs> I bet you anything the cooks were doing it. <laughs> like they gave him the they gave him that apple or whatever. <laughs> you know he wanted a banana, so you know the cooks got to see this monkey. Of course. But yeah, dude, I love it. All right. The the only unfortunate thing is uh, you know, Ham was captured by trappers and uh he did have well, presumed to have a family at a at a young age and Part of his training, um, they would kind of do electrical shocks to his feet. And, you know, when he failed to respond uh, to certain testing. So though he did 
make it back, you know, I guess there was still a high price in training, you know, because I mean, that's just how they, I guess they trained uh, animals back then. But um, I mean, what, what's the timeline here? Like what, what, like, let's go back. Like we, we've been, you know, 1940s, 1960s, you know, like we've been, we're still sending animals into space. When I say we, I mean, civilization of the human race. <laughs> like the one thing that you were telling me um, offline was, that the only nations or the only nation to still send monkeys is Russia. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, PETA has petitioned. Uh, most countries have actually stopped, or NASA, the European Space Agency, the, even the, the Chinese National Space Administration have all uh, decided to stop using primates. Recently, of course, they sent the squids, and we still send other types of animals, but chimpanzees are off the list but russia refuses to uh, do that and PETA's still <laughs> petitioning for that but um knowing russia i mean they'll do whatever the hell they want right dude putin's got plans for his monkeys i don't know if that's part of his uh what is he a prime minister or something yeah he's a prime minister but but think of it like this if you could send a monkey to space to like fix a space station over a human you know, think of it like that. You don't have to pay for life insurance. If they, they die, you don't have to pay. I don't know. If they could train monkeys to fix these space stations, you know, or or do whatever, fuck it. They might send a space, uh, a monkey to one of our government satellites and just have them, like, go ham on that shit. Start ripping fucking antennas and shit. Oh, man. <laughs> or just, like, punch the shit out of, like, a nuclear warhead in space. <laughs> Dude, it could be something that, uh, that Elon Musk is, like, kind of, like, Kind of, you know, <laughs> scheming because of all these new AI advances and like these really scary videos of, oh my god, you know, like robots that are like making all these crazy face emotions. Dude, imagine like, dude, we're, we're that much closer to the fucking lore of Alien. You know, the the yeah. the, the synthetics. Yes, yes, oh, man. Or or even we go back to Space Odyssey. You know, um, hello, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Quick shout out to uh, your friend for editing that um, promotion together. Yeah, those that are listening, just just listening, uh, we got a little surprise at the end of the video. We'll be sure to drop a link to what my friend was making for for the podcast. Uh, I told him what I kind of wanted was uh, a video of Albert II, like a, a dramatization of what he was going through on his reentry to Earth. And I think he he did it justice. So it's a it's a good thirty second clip. If you haven't seen it on Twitter or anything else, <laughs> well, we'll definitely you need to definitely check it out. It's it's terrifying, but also kind of funny at the same time. If you have a dark sense of humor, I think you'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's talk about Lycia, the space oh, Lyca? Do- the spice the space dog, and how iconic she was. You know, uh, Russia. Right, Russia sent a stray dog. They just picked up a dog off the slum streets and said, "We're gonna send this dog to space." And she kind of became like a iconic uh, figure. You know, this is during like the space race era, Cold War ish time. So it's like a dick measuring contest between Russia and U.S. She was the symbol of like, "Hey, look what we did." Of course, she didn't make it back, but. You know, her reward was being put on a post stamp. That was that's and a few movies too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there, there's actually a few really good documentaries that go into uh, the history and what they've done with like. Uh, and in her um, legacy, they actually sent two dogs that actually returned from space after her. Well, well, well actually, Jess, why don't you go over like. Before before we get into that part, why don't you go over some of her other legacy? That she um, well, it looks like they memorialized her in the form of a statue and plaque at Star City, Russia, the Russian cosmonaut training facility in 97. And Laika's positioned behind the cosmonauts with her ears erect. All right. Yeah. Okay. The Monument to the Conquerors of Space, constructed in 1964, uh, also includes Laika. And, yep, they poised her on top of a space rocket. Stamps and envelopes 
picturing Lyco were produced, as well as branded cigarettes and matches. Whenever you're smoking a nice uh, square, well, at least for the Russians, you got to thank that dog. He's a goddamn hero. Yep. And you know what can't... Dude, I, I just looked this up on uh, this other article we have, and so there's two dogs that actually did come back from their mission. It was uh, Belka and Strelka. Yep. And here's here's something interesting. After they came back, Strelka gave birth to six puppies, and one of the puppies was given to none other than John F. Kennedy by Nikita Khrushchev himself. During the space race, yeah, what? What, a dude? F- that that is such a fucking flex. During the <laughs> dude, he was pissed. He was like, "Oh, thanks, man. I'll be sure to keep this as a daily reminder of what you've done." <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, dude, there was that's like such a low key fucking gut punch. I like it. Yeah, here you go. This is a this is what we you know. That's probably why he got fucking shot. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Yeah, there is this. Man, we that could be a whole discussion for another day, you know. But. Oh no, you, you listeners on Bit Shoot, tell me what you think. <laughs> Drop it in the comments, please. Yeah, please tell us your theories of why John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Because he was given the dog from one of the surviving members of from space. <laughs> oh man, that's, maybe that's one that they you know hasn't been used yet, but you know that you're hearing it first here on the Ohms Lounge. Yeah, we're uncovering the truth. So whenever they released the documents on the assassination of Donald Kennedy, you, you hear it here first. It was because of the dog. Bro. All right. Speaking of documents, whenever it, going back to Albert. So there's Albert, Albert II, who tragically died upon reentry. And then there's Albert I, who died just on launch. And whenever I was watching the video, I have it and I'll drop it in the links down below. It's the 10 minute video. And they were like, oh, yeah, the documents mystery, uh, mysteriously disappeared. And it's because the fucking the rocket, like, did not work. So oh. <laughs> they, were, they were like, <laughs> uh, well, we don't have any documentation on that. But, yeah, we, 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 uh, we agree that Albert was a monkey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, didn't they say the same thing about the first moon landing, though? Ooh. Like, yeah, I know me and you kind of disagree on that. You you don't believe that the moon landing was real. I think back in the day, I mean, they just used thermal paper and they probably didn't have a good way of saving documentation. So it could be possible that they legitimately lost it. But in that case, uh, were they embarrassed? Maybe. Did they plan on having both Alberts come back? Possibly. It still is pretty sad. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I don't think any of these animals should have. I can understand, like, just from the the school of thought from, like, the 40s and 50s. There was all sorts of things that were that were passed off as, like, yeah, this is fine. Who cares? Like, who gives a damn? Then by today's standards, you have people like PETA and. Well, NASA NASA kind of brought up an argument to themselves. When, you know, when whenever someone criticizes them, or back in the day, you know, this article uh, I'm reading from Forbes, they said, "Look, without this animal testing, we have huge risk for human life." So it's like, okay, obviously, we value human life over animal life. It, it's it's cold to say that, but it's true, right? I mean, these. You know, think of how much training and money goes into training these astronauts. With the monkeys, probably significantly less, right? These monkeys don't get fucking paid. They get fed. They get taken care of. They get you know, stripped away from their family. I mean, I, it logistically, I can see the reason. But obviously, people still disagree with this, right? <laughs> So I mean, people have pet monkeys in Florida that get their face ripped off by monkeys. So. Michael Jackson had a pet monkey. Who else? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bubbles. I remember Bubbles. Bubbles. Dude, I miss him. <laughs> Do you think they would send, but like, if he would volunteer Bubbles, Dude. if they asked him, they probably would never ask him. But like, I want to put a link in the description. I want to look for it. There's this guy on YouTube. He ends up sending his goldfish into outer space, or at least like low orbit or whatever, like past the ionosphere. And they have like a GoPro or something attached to it. And then it's just so stupid, man. It's really dumb. 
I know you're sensitive because you know I have a pet goldfish. Your goldfish Fred. is right next to you, and you're just imagining if you launch that motherfucker to space, how he would be feeling betrayed. Dude, he he would have to be short of like putting my life in den- in danger for me to even entertain the idea to put him in outer space. He's got Goku with him. He'll 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 uh he'll just protect him with the Super Saiyan energy. Oh yeah. He's, yeah. Well, maybe we'll show you guys a picture later. We got little Goku in in the fish tank. <laughs> yeah, I got some video of my goldfish, a 30 minute video that I'm unashamed of talking about that listeners might uh judge me for, but hey, you know what? There's there's dog moms and cat moms out there and dog dads and dog uh, cat dads, right? I I just ho- so happen to be a a goldfish dad. You know, speaking of fish, uh they actually sent the first fish that were spent sent into space Spent forty eight days in orbit on a Russian uh, spacecraft, and in, it's in, in the seventies. Like, what do they get out of that? Like, what what information do they get out of that? Is what I want to know. And like, I know that they sent they send all sorts of weird things, not just animals, but like they send different types of bacteria, and a lot of that stuff is over my head, and I don't get it, but I can definitely see why it's important to know. Well, I think the big thing too, um, I know not common knowledge, but it's kind of well known that a lot of astronauts that send, uh, spend a lot of time in space, their bone density uh, significantly decreases. And so I think what the whole point of like sending different animals with different anatomies, like such as rats, mice, worms, all kinds of stuff is just to see like the reaction of what it'll be in space because think of it like this like let, like like let's just say bacteria for example i don't know i'm just thinking in my head like what if like you know they don't sanitize the spacecraft and there's a significant amount of bacteria in the ship and then it just like has some sort of adverse effect in the spacecraft and you know causes it to go it just causes it to have malfunctions or something so i guess you could say that you know all these testings are just safeguards for future space travel i guess i mean could we live in space like could this stuff live in space i mean we did kind of have a topic about this have we had animals has anyone been born in space for you gundam fans is there any any space noids out there is there any uh space people and uh no there's no there's not been any mammal to successfully produce a baby in space uh they tried with uh mice and a few other different types of animals, but the embryos couldn't fully develop. Now, uh, don't want to discuss you, but the first animal or that did successfully reproduce was a cockroach, and they were actually collected from some government facility in Russia, an unknown building that they won't disclose. But those motherfuckers survived. They don't want you to know anything about that. Because if you know that, then that's a national security. Dude, imagine just like, yeah, we have the information on these cockroaches in outer space. It's top secret. It's bigger than top secret. The fucking roach's name was Hope. That's that's ominous. I don't know what that means, but that is scary. <laughs> I don't I don't like that. It was on a it, you know what's crazy? It gave birth to 33 little roaches. Well, 33 bugger. They say cockroaches are the biggest survivors of, of all the animals, right? I mean, you know, they say they can survive nuclear warheads, you know, any natural disaster. And now to add to the list, space. Like the last thing that I was reading about, like the last animal to be sent into outer space, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was. Yeah, right here. A Hawaiian bobtail squid. SpaceX ERS-22. So you know that, you know, Daddy Elon, he's in on this whole uh, sending animals into outer space. He's not above it. Like, I remember, what was it? The whole uh, Neuralink thing. He was doing it to to pigs. Just able to kind of figure out what the hell this pig is doing with Neuralink. Now he's trying to get information on, all right, what what, what can we learn from squids being launched into outer space as hatchlings i mean they say squids are actually pretty intelligent so as hatchlings as hatchlings i'm not sure but as fully grown adults they have a different anatomy too i guess so maybe because of their 
uh, jelly like you know maybe the whole bone density thing i was talking about maybe it, it like kind of plays into that where maybe the way their body is so uh maybe they're not adversely affected as much i don't know do we know what came of that well they just launched that this year on june 3rd 2021 so it was a commercial resupply services uh, mission to the ISS on June 3rd, contracted by NASA, flown out by SpaceX using the Cargo Dragon 2. That's a pretty sick looking ship. And this is the second flight for SpaceX under NASA's CRS Phase 2 contract awarded in 2016. So I guess somewhere along the way, they were like, hey man, can we send some uh, bobtail squids into outer space? Like, Oh yeah, do it. Looks like mission support sciences from the human health to high-end computing. Uh, develop better pharmaceuticals and therapies for treating kidney disease on Earth. Using cotton root systems to identify varieties of plants to require less water and pesticides. Ultrasonic sound, or no, ultrasound technology and microgravity. There's re- Oh, okay, all right, here we go. Two model organism investigations. One study will look at the bobtail squid as a model to examine the effects of sp- uh, space flight on interactions between beneficial microbes and their animal hosts. And the second will examine tardigrades' adaption to harsh environments of space, which could contribute to long-term problem solving for vaccine production uh, and distribution and storage on Earth. That's interesting. So... I, apparently, just sending animals into space is going to be somewhat useful to vaccine research. Long-term problem-solving for vaccine production, distribution, and storage. Yeah, so that's that's pretty big. Got to thank those water bears, man. That's you know, and we also got to take a, the fact of the radiation. I mean, how how does radiation affect these things? I mean, these motherfuckers aren't wearing spacesuits. I mean, I think. The monkeys did, but they're not putting a fucking spacesuit on any of the animals, I'm guessing. Like, I don't know. I guess the spaceship probably has enough shielding to protect it, but all the microgravity effects on it, like, how does that affect these things? Here's a, here's a quick thing. Going back to the old uh, article we had on the RMG.co. Uh, so there were moths that were born on Earth and sent into space that were unable to control their flight in microgravity and also clung into the surfaces. So the moths that were born in space managed to float and fly, sometimes even controlled landings. So like, I guess the big question is, can animals adapt quickly to space? Because roaches, those motherfuckers adapt very quickly. That's why, you know, when it comes to pesticides... You know, the raid cans, they have to make them stronger every other year because these insects keep getting stronger and adapting to those poisons. So with that quick life cycle and generations, you can imagine that these animals could potentially kind of like how in Gundam, you know, how humans eventually (laughs) adapt to space and become stronger within space and you have the ability to see space ghosts. So maybe... (laughs) Josh is just shaking his head. Alms is shaking his head. Like I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to think, man. Like we're we're using we're using things like like Gundam as as like a very very real possibility to happen for us. And like all I'm thinking in my head is just like, dude, what if cockroaches evolve and they start developing like an opposable thumb? Yeah, that, that's a scary yeah. thought. Like I don't know, if, like it would be kind of far fetched, but you know, a lot of old school B movies, you know, have roaches being like. Uh, I remember there's this really old school uh, Godzilla movie, Godzilla versus Gigan. It was made in the 70s, and there was these space aliens who were trying to control Godzilla, and uh, they turned out to be cockroaches in human skin, and they didn't show like the giant cockroaches; they just showed like the shadow of it. Like, so if you saw their shadow, they were roach shadows, it, even though they were in human form. It was so cheesy, but, you know, who knows, man? Like, 
where we'll be in a thousand years, where roaches will be in a thousand years. Who knows? But, you know. I don't like that idea at all. And There was, you know, okay, on a lighter note, there was one animal that was saved from being sent to space. And that was a guinea pig named uh, Galaxonaut. What a stupid fucking name. <laughs> Galaxonaut. And, you know, PETA petitioned this Switzerland space committee called just paraphrase the DTA and uh, they actually gave this guy the guy who was planning the whole expedition got an award from PETA. I was like, hey, thanks for saving this cute little guinea pig. He's really cute in the picture, to be honest. But I mean, okay, we saved a guinea pig. What about fucking Albert? I mean... I don't even know when PETA was around, like when they first came around. But didn't PETA like bomb some places too? I'm pretty sure they did. There, there is some controversial stuff with PETA and their true intentions. I mean, that that's a could be a whole like discussion in itself. But uh, when you brought this topic to me, it was kind of like the first thing I thought of. Like, okay, we're sending these animals to space. Obviously, there's going to be people oh, opposed to this. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, uh, well, that's uh, <laughs> what the uh, fuck. What bad things have Peter done? <laughs> they killed thousands of pets and domestic animals. They're sexist. If, if you're a listener and you're for Peta, oh, I'm sorry. Look, this is all for jokes. Fire Ooh. bombs show new tactics of animal activists. Yeah, dude. Just uh, I don't know, dude. Don't don't do. Don't I do don't car think car bombs. Well, I mean, come on. They're not going to have the – I don't think they have the balls to go for a, a government facility like NASA or, or the EU or China or, you know, definitely not in China or, they're, or Russia. They're not going to fucking do shit to them. NASA, I mean, I could see, like, some people protesting and maybe doing some ballsy shit. But, man, you, you can't really touch that. Like, you can protest. You know, you have the right to do that, but – there's no way they're going to do no fucking firebomb or car bombs in NASA. They'll get, you know, they'll get killed. Let's not divulge into PETA. So <laughs> we got one more article I kind of want to, you, you found kind of last minute. Just read the title for us of this article. 60 years ago, Space Chimp made history and left a dark legacy. That's pretty haunting. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, this was written like a week ago. Oh. Uh, it's about... He knows the chimp. He ordered, uh, orbited Earth before John Glenn. Wow. Yeah. Bet John Glenn was... Oh, it says neither Enos or John Glenn were happy about that. <laughs> I don't know what the context is on that. Do we have an actual quote from John Glenn that said that? or is that just... No, that's what it just says yeah, in the article. Like, like, let's just... Jeez. What else does this guy have to say? All right. So let me just read off some of this stuff. So it says right here, in the terms of the human family... As most broadly defined, the first three to orbit around Earth were Soviet cosmonauts Yuri uh, Gagarin and, I guess that's how you say it, Germain Titov, and American astronaut, American astronaut Enos. That is, Enos, the chimpanzee who was launched into orbit in a Mercury capsule on November 29th, 1961, much of the Gagarin of the human Mercury astronauts. So, reading over this, let's see here. University of Chicago space historian and National Air and Space Museum, uh, Guggenheim fellow, Jordan Bim tells Inverse, that's not the kind of record the human astronauts really wanted to see during the space race, I'm guessing. Uh, they would have much preferred that be Colonel John Glenn. <laughs> Oh, my God. Who cares? Like, pride, let alone, like, look, man, this monkey put in the fucking time. and uh, He did it, man. And this this fucking quote right here. Enos would have probably preferred John Glenn take a seat, too. Like, Oh, man. Oh my God, dude. Like, did Enos survive or did he? Let's see. Enos would have probably have would probably have preferred John Glenn to take a seat, too. As Bim notes, some fairly horrific spacecraft malfunctions resulted in an harrowing flight for the chimpanzee so i'm guessing he died who afterward was mostly ignored by the press by contrast ham the chimpanzee who 
whose January 31st, 1961 suborbital flight paved the way for Alan Shepard's subsequent suborbital mission aboard Freedom 7, graced the cover of Life magazine. That's kind of funny, you know, just kind of how, like how you mentioned earlier how they kind of like got rid of the evidence of Albert being a mistake. And now, uh, of course, we have a similar situation with Enos where they're just trying to cover, not really cover it up, but they're just like, look, uh, let's just not cover this too much. We don't want to. The winners decide the fate of history, right? They rewrite history. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, I guess what we can kind of take from all this, all these different stories about the animals, they served a purpose. Was it ethical? No. In the con- in the contrast of testing this on humans, I-, I guess you could say that it's somewhat justified for – there's a lot of people that uh, don't agree with us going to space at all. They think it's a waste of money and time. But the, f- the truth is, I mean, we do have to know what's out there. I mean, it's – space is just endless and who's to say in – generations to come the earth goes to shit i mean where are we gonna go can we live in space like how long will we last in space because like you look at all those other like sci-fi type movies where you know they cryogenically freeze everyone and then they go on like a long ass journey to space who's to say that i wonder like if that's going to be the next thing like we send like a frozen animal or cryogenically frozen person or animal into space see the effects of that like i would be interested to see like what effects that would have on someone like would they have any negative reactions to being frozen not only frozen but also sent into space because i think for now we've no one's actually been frozen right like we've only saved some people's minds right i know harvard has a famous uh, section where they frozen people's brains kept that on display i mean Who's to say they might, you know, going back to what you said about the neural links and the androids, like uploading someone's consciousness to an android or something, sending that into space. Like if we could do that, right? Like, why don't we just send androids to space? Why? Why not? If we have these advanced AI, why not have them to go to space? That's more of a technological question that I don't think either of us are kind of at liberty to speak on. But yeah, yeah, you're right. Like it, we already have so much stuff that's doing a lot of really amazing things. And I mean, we have what is it like 4D imagery for doctors to use so that they can do like non invasive procedures on heart, like surgeries and stuff, like really, really amazing things. And if scientists are still kind of going with the idea of using animals in space, like. We're not doing like the crazy mad scientist stuff that I'm like reading over on uh, on this article, like where how you know he had like three catheters inserted into him, one going to his heart and one going to I believe his his heart, his right. bladder. Yeah. So going back into it, so like you know he had multiple catheters, uh, including three into his heart and one into his bladder. And it's pretty bad. Um, Enos ripped out almost all the catheters, and including one, leaving uh, including that one, leaving just one in his heart. So it says that it was a real mess in there. Bim says an attending Air Force doctor said that if if Enos had pulled out the last uh, cardiac catheter out, he would have bled to death. Jesus. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's pretty horrific. And (sighs) I think it's pretty safe to say we're not doing crazy mad scientist stuff like that anymore. As a, you know, advances in technology. And I think we kind of got it mostly under control. I'm pretty sure there's still some pretty horrific things that are going on that press isn't seeing. But... I don't know, man. I, I would say I would say just be thankful that we did that way back then instead of us doing that now. Yeah, now you you couldn't get away with that for sure. I mean, I don't know. I mean, we didn't test this on any humans. We did it on animals. They paid the price, unfortunately, to get us to where we are now. 
who's to say where SpaceX or NASA would be or any of these other space organizations would be without any of these uh, these flights, these tests. But, you know, I think closing thoughts on this, though, you know, it was a fun topic, but I thought it was going to be really funny when we saw all of the pictures and stuff. And then as we, like, went further down the rabbit hole of uh, what exactly went into these, it became more sad, I guess. But I, at the same time, I also somewhat marvel at the the choices and how far we've come from doing all that in less than a century, you know? Yeah, I would say it's, it definitely kept, it, it kept me entertained from like what I was reading and like looking at the photos of monkeys being dressed up in space astronaut suits and shaking hands with captains of naval, naval warships. And it made me a bit more like, damn, like I, I really feel bad for animals, <laughs> like more so than I than I did before I even did the research in this in this subject. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Because people are like, you wouldn't send your dog to space, would you? You wouldn't send your fucking goldfish, would you? Huh? Oh, I would never do that. I like I like my goldfish. I like them too. They won me over at first. I was a little skeptical at first. I'm like, why does he have goldfish? And then I'm like, oh, you know what? These guys are nice. Yeah, man. They're they're kind of like little. Little sea dogs, you know, <laughs> they just like rip shit up inside their tiny little aquarium yeah. that they're happy in. Yeah, is where they were before. They they had a bunch of uh, other goldfish, and now it's just two of them and pregnant shrimp and two other little shrimp. Nice, nice. yeah, dude. They're they're happy. But closing it out, man. Well, I kind of want to take this time talk about where we've been at with this podcast, and you know, we were on a. I've been updating my show or the show uh, Tales from the Lone Salesman uh, somewhat regularly. Try to do at least two episodes a month. Uh, Ohm's Lounge, we kind of not exactly burned out, but we uh, had other things going on and we took a short hiatus. And then all of a sudden, you know, you came to me with this idea like, look, you like every other, you know, we, we always talk about the podcast uh, offline, of course, and, you know, thinking about stuff we could do. The last episode we did with Riot Games and all the different game updates, that was a fun little thing to go over. Uh, Arcane, uh, Ruined Legend, you know, um, Ruined King, and Project L, along with Halo. And then you came up with this idea, Space Animals. I was like, of course, yeah, it's a fun topic. Why not? We want to do more stuff like this, you know, and obviously I think this turned out really great. And these ideas don't always come easily, trust me, because even with money, like, I run out of things to talk about. Like, I, I really wanted to talk about Godzilla Singular Point, Evangelion, and now I'm like, well, where do I go from here? Do I talk about other shows or do I talk about stuff that I only really want to cover? I am asking the audience or our listeners, our viewers, our fans, if you're out there, if you give us a topic to cover, something that's somewhat interesting something that's got a decent amount of substance to we're looking for something fun something like this well didn't turn out to be that fun but <laughs> i thought it was fun it, it was fun no i'm just saying the context got a little dark but i mean hey man that's the life that we live yeah i mean we're, we're just trying to keep it real you know and um we're asking you guys to and gals and whoever you know to give us some topics you know like hey Send us some messages on Twitter. We got our WordPress website. Leave a comment in the YouTube video or bit you. You know, we want to hear more from you guys on ideas that you'd like to hear us talk about. And we've kind of reached out to some of our friends and colleagues too. Like we have some other ideas kind of brewing up. Won't give it away too much because it's still in a primordial stage. But uh, I don't know, Josh, what do you think? So far, just from a year of us, we started this year, right? Yeah, earlier in May. Okay, so we started up in May. We did all this, and you know, we're we're happy with the numbers. We're I get really, really excited whenever we get just even even one view. You know, like every view is just like, yeah, this isn't for nothing. Awesome, people are listening. It's exciting, and 
what's even more exciting is when our other friends like get into it, like uh, Wasted Space. He's the one who does our artwork for the show. Like, uh, if you have fan art, anything, send it, send it our way. Send us a message. Reach out to us. Like, if you're a game dev, if you do graphic design, if whatever it is, if you want to talk about anything, like, just reach out. Uh, we'll talk to you. See how you see how you are and stuff like that. Or even if you make um, any music too, that'd be really cool. We're always looking for music to feature on the show for. You know, intros, outros, or in between. You know, we'll give you a shout out. Like, we're just here to have fun. I think that's what we're doing while we still can. Or I have to go and start my actual adult life. Like, I'm transitioning out of the military, and I'm going to be staying out here in Japan. So that's where I've been. I'm having to worry about, like, getting a house and all that stuff. It's all under control, but I'm going to be getting married soon, and it's it's a lot. But I also want... Like, th- this podcast, I really, really enjoy doing it. So, it's what I want to end the year out on for the listeners and the fans and the viewers. Reach out, send us a message, and yeah. Yeah, definitely. Going back on what you said about uh, talking to different types of people, you know, or using your, if you submit something to us, like, we want to interview you guys, too, like... The whole thing that kind of started this is when we had a friend who was talking, you know, he had his idea of interviewing different people in his industry. So I'm like, huh, that's interesting. So why don't we interview and talk to the people we know? And then outside of that, we haven't exactly gone outside our comfort zone and talked to strangers. We've mostly talked to acquaintances and people we're familiar with. So if you're someone, an artist, a designer, programmer, whatever, you know, we, we would love to just ask you the question. Now there's no certain criteria, but Ohm's lounge is like exactly that. It's a lounge. We sit back, we relax, we shoot the shit. We talk about, you know, what you're about, what we're about and uh, get into that and hopefully, you know, put your name out there. If it's not already out there, you're like, Hey, we're putting you out there and, we're talking about what you're interested in. So I like doing this as well. As Josh mentioned, uh, you know, we're, we're always going through changes. I'm moving. We're, we're right now in the same town, but I'm going to be moving to the big city. We're still going to be, you know, be doing the podcast remotely, but uh, it's, it's exciting. You know, like I've, I've been through the same thing he did. I got out, I was married and, it was uh it was a tough transition. Not everyone can do it. Some people have hard time and this kind of thing, this little hobby we do, it's it's a nice little distraction of everything. Something we can get motivated and put our heart into. So uh we're looking forward to the future. Next year we're gonna be putting out at least an episode every few months. At least not not every month, but at least, you know, enough to keep you guys satisfied for sure and the more engagement we get the more it'll motivate us to do more with the show that's all i got to say josh anything else you want to say to the audience oh man that's it like subscribe hit us up on our socials have a good rest of the year yeah happy new year this, yeah, will, man. this will definitely be the last podcast of the year so enjoy the holidays enjoy your new year and hoping for the best